Hello, it's Larissa, and I'm back with some more cool, fun machine stuff. And today, I would like to tell you about the Boff Passport 3.0. Let's talk about the buttons that you see on the front of the machine. First, we have our reverse button, and that is going to make the machine sew in reverse. Then we have our play stop button. That button is going to let me sew without the foot control if I choose to. I like using this feature when I'm doing decorative stitches so I can keep both of my hands on the fabric and help guide it. Then we have the best button on this machine, the scissor button. The scissor button is going to trim both the top and the bottom thread once I am done with my stitching. Then I have the needle position button. When I tap that button, it's going to send the needle to the lowest place or to the highest place. And I would like for it to be in the highest place when I'm doing my threading. Then just above that, we have our stitch length and our stitch width. Over to the side, we have our tie-off button. And we can push that when we would like to end a stitch. So it will make a knot or a back stitch for me so my stitches don't come out. Then I have my info button, and I'll come right back to that in just a second. If you notice here, I have a keypad, and if you notice over here, I have a stitch card. On my stitch card, each stitch has a number underneath. So if I want to do stitch 58, I'm going to type 5, 8, and then I can stitch stitch number 58. If I'm curious to know what kind of foot I want to use, this is when the info button comes back in. I'm going to hit info and it's going to tell me that I want to use the 2A foot. Then right here I have speed control. This is nice if I would like to make sure that if I have little ones on the machine they're not stitching too fast and it will help pace me if I'm doing quilting but I can also be a total speed demon if I want to. Here are the included accessories for the Passport 3.0. You're going to get five bobbins, one felt pad, a screwdriver for the needle plate, a multi-purpose tool, a spool cap, and two large spool caps, a seam ripper and brush, an edge guide, and an auxiliary spool pin. Also shown here are some additional accessories like the needle pack and not pictured is the hard cover. As for presser feet, you're going to get six presser feet with this machine. You're going to get the standard presser foot, your fancy stitch foot 1A, your fancy stitch foot 2A, blind hem foot, a zipper foot, and a one step buttonhole foot. Okay, I am going to show you how to wind a bobbin on this machine. So we're going to put our thread on our spool pin as normal. And we're going to go through checkpoint number one right here. And this picture indicates to me which direction I want the thread to be moving. So I have a little disc right here. And I want to be able to hear and feel that thread click in. So I'm going to end up bringing it around, just like the picture shows me. We're going to go straight over here, and I am going to use an empty bobbin. So what I like to do is I like to take the thread and go from the inside of the bobbin to the outside of the bobbin using one of these holes right here. And, oh, look at that. Lucky try. So I am going to pop this bobbin down onto the bobbin winding spindle here and I'm going to wrap this extra thread around my fingers really tight because I want that tail to break off once the bobbin winder starts spinning. So I'm going to kick this over and I can either use the foot control or the start button and right now I'm actually going to use the start button. The FOF Passport 3.0 is a top loading bobbin machine. So in order to get into the bobbin area here, 
I have a little door opener right here. I'm going to pull this black piece to the right and you'll see that this is going to pop right off. We're going to set this to the side for right now. And the important thing to know when you're placing a bobbin into this machine is that if you were holding the bobbin in your left hand and the tail in the right, you want to be able to wrap that thread back up counterclockwise. If you don't have the bobbin in the right way, it is not going to work. So as long as I have the thread moving counterclockwise, then I can drop this right in. And I'm going to put my finger on here so I have a little bit of tension. And I'm going to bring this tail that I have forward and right over to the left. And I'm going to follow those arrows. And then I have, you can see, a little U-turn right here. I'm going to catch it on that peg. And I've got one more spot here. I'm just going to fit that thread under there. And this has a tiny little cutter on it. So what I like to do is before I pull it too hard, I like to put my door back on and then I will pull the thread. And now you are ready to go. You don't even need to pull up the bobbin thread to get going. system you're going to place your finger on this grooved black piece in the back and I'm just going to push it forward until it clicks into the machine <laughs> 